crease command, right? Talk about the three crease control qualities of composure, command, compete. When we're talking about command, maximizing that net coverage by maintaining control of the shooting lane, right? As the puck transitions. You all went through a learning process with regards to box control. I gave you that video to look at. Most of us have talked about it, reviewed it together one-on-one. -on -one. I want to make sure that you understand when I sat down with uh, Braden last week, I was able to kind of draw out this little thing here. Obviously, net, goal line. We know that the net on its own is a basic six, four by six, 24 square feet, like we saw in that video. What the box control is, is the box size that the puck has access to in relation to where it's sitting. So what we have here is, is if your heels are just slightly in front, maybe four to six inches in front of the red line, right? You've now created a box size of approximately 22 feet. I didn't do any math on it, but it's kind of basic understanding that the more you, you, you move out towards the puck, right? The smaller the box area becomes. You see here where the puck is? We draw a four lines that create a pyramid funnel. That pyramid funnel creates corners. So now with, with, the, um, with your feet, plus or minus mid depth, which is what we're asking you to do on uh, this drill here, right? That slide shuffle coming out with edge control, you're getting out into that mid zone area. Now you have, again, approximately 20 square feet. Where, when you're out with your toes at the top of the creases, and what I'm expecting to try to see from you here, right? You're now approximately 18 square feet to have to cover. So bigger goalies cover more area. Smaller goalies don't cover more area. But yes, ideally, when we're in that situation, tactically, we want to maximize depth. We want to maximize the challenge that allows us to get to the top of the crease. But we all know the game of hockey, especially for goalies, is definitely not perfect, is it? You don't have that luxury all the time. The reason we're getting you to do the slide shuffle here is we want you to get out quick, but we also want you to maintain the shooting lane because what's the other component that goes into box control? Center and square, often called the angle. Center and square. When we slide out aggressively, the one downside with sliding is what? Bully? It's hard to get back up. You're, you've limited your mobility. Uh, not so much, Purdue. You're still sliding. Yeah, you don't control the ice as well, right? So by introducing this tactic, that helps us a little bit more, right? So box size equals depth plus puck location. Now here's the interesting thing. We talked about command, maximizing net coverage that maintains control of the shooting lane as the puck transitions. So if we tee this up like a golf ball every time, easy peasy, we know exactly where we want to be. But the problem is, is as you can see with these drills, it's constantly moving, isn't it? So now one of the things that we notice, and you may have noticed in your videos that you got back, box control wasn't always there for you as you transitioned, right? Shuffling across sometimes, you're not center and square. Um, sometimes you've got not enough depth, sometimes you've got too much depth. You're trying to try to challenge way too much in that situation and you can't establish the top of the crease or establish a stop position on the puck that allows you to be reactive, okay? So, command or crease command, Something that you want to be aware of. The other thing is, is we want you to challenge yourself, bring yourself just to the other side 
of the edge of your ability, just to the other side of your edge of your ability, right? But please, maintain some emotional control. We all have it. Don't, be, don't feel like, hey, I'm not that good because I can't control my emotions. Be aware of your emotions. Change them into positive feelings, right? Make sure that, again, we convert those because we always talk about this. If you're out there and you're slapping your stick or you're shaking your head, what can you not do? What can't you do if you're in that place in your brain? Lose composure and let your mind take over. Yeah, you're losing composure, right on. Uh, it's harder to get back into it. Oh, you're, you're letting you letting the other team like know that you're off your game. Yes, but from a training perspective, yes. Um, from a comp focus. competition, you can't focus on what? On the drill, on the, on the actual, the things that you're supposed to be working on. Thank you. The corrections, right? The things that we have to correct, right? The drill, yeah, the drill's the drill. The drill's not going to change, especially these two drills. They're pretty, they're pretty standard, right? They're going to follow the same pattern. This one here follows a, a very controlled pattern at the beginning. It breaks up where it forces you to read the play a little bit more because we're giving the shooter a bit of an option. But what we're talking about composure is what we're talking about is not letting your emotions take over, that your brain now can't function to make the correction. I said this last week, I'm gonna say it again. We're July 14th. This is where we make mistakes. This is where we're supposed to make mistakes. Because if we use the proper approach, we don't beat ourselves up, and we focus on making the corrections, or we bring awareness to the corrections, we become better, right? Awesome, go get changed.